Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Wednesday, February the 13th. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Tonight, the Vancouver Canucks play in Anaheim against the Anaheim Ducks, kicking off a three-game road trip through California. We have Anaheim tonight, LA Toronto night Thursday, and then San Jose, the rematch on Saturday night. And a lot to talk about with this team, a lot of transactions yesterday, and then I want to finish off this video talking about Zach McEwen. So, last, yesterday we learned that the Canucks traded a seventh round pick in their 2020 entry draft, so not this year, but next year, to the New York Rangers for goaltender Merrick Mazanik. I talked about him yesterday, 31 games played over five seasons in the NHL since being drafted in the sixth round by Nashville in 2012. Apparently all his visa issues are straightened out, so I, Expect him to be the backup today, not the starter, but the backup, especially if Jacob Markstrom is ready to go. The Canucks are skating at 11.30 tonight, in, uh, tonight, not tonight, they're skating at 11.30 this morning in Anaheim. I'll be busy in work meetings, so I won't be able to upload a video over lunch today with any lineup changes. You just, ha just have to follow Twitter, the Canucks account, or, or Bachelor, or Brennan Bachelor, or Jeff Patterson, whoever it is. You can follow them for the line combinations and the starting goalie, but I'm guessing it is indeed Jacob Markstrom and Nett if his back spasms are okay, and then with Mazanic backing him up. And then likely you play Mazanic tomorrow in LA, and then hopefully Markstrom's okay to go, good to go in, in San Jose on Saturday. So I expect to see Markstrom and Nett, D, probably the same six guys, although I don't like the way Tanev and Gabranson are going, but likely it's gonna be, of course, Hutton and Stetcher, Tanev and Gabranson, and then Pouliot Viega. And then up front's interesting because they just called up Adam Gaudet. We learned that Brandon Sutter is going to be out for a little while. And the natural, obviously, would put Godet at center and then to bring Marcus Granlin out. And I tried to predict line combinations on Monday. It was completely fruitless so, because it, it, I was way off. But I'm going to try again today. If we like uh, Roussel and Vertanen playing with, together, and especially playing with Horvat, I could see it being Horvat between Roussel and Vertanen, then Pedersen, Besser, Levo, and then a third line of Godet, McEwen, and Godobin, and the fourth line of Beagle, Erickson, and Mott. And actually, even as I say those out loud, I actually like Godobin with Pedersen and, and Besser and then bring Levo down. So maybe it's Horvat, Roussel, Vertanen, Pedersen, Besser, Ver Godobin. And then imagine a third line of Godobin, not Godobin, imagine a third line of Gaudet with McEwen and Josh Levo. That would be a big line, a tough line to play against. And then, of course, I, I, Travis Green likes his fourth line of, of Beagle, Erickson, and Mott. So there, a lot could change in the, in the top three lines. We just know this. We know that Pedersen and Besser will play together. We know that they'll load Horvat up with them once in a while to, to uh, if they really need a goal. Or, or usually that happens at home, admittedly, at the end of a period. But, you know, that's still exciting to see when you, they put the big three together. But there's, a, you know, a lot of talk about Roussel playing with Horvat. And I've always said how much I like Roussel and Vertanen playing together. So put them all together. I'd love to see Roussel, Horvat, Vertanen, Pedersen, Besser, Godobin, and then... McEwen and Levo surrounding Adam Gaudet. But uh, Adam Gaudet has always played well. He's uh, been improving throughout the year, doing well in Utica, and he's showing marked improvement when he's with the Canucks. So I'm excited to see what he can do. And let's talk, actually, before we talk about Zach McEwen, let's talk about the Anaheim Ducks. They suck. They just um, fired their coach. Uh, their GM, Bob Murray, is going to be behind the bench, even though he's never coached a game before. Their two main goalies are out, Gibson and Miller. So the Canucks are going to be facing, you know, a not a strong goaltender. And I think the Ducks have won twice in the last 21 games. Amazingly, they're only six points behind the Canucks in the standings. After all that, that's because before those 21, uh, you know, that horrible two wins in 21 game stretch, I think they went nine and one or something like that over the, the 10 games prior to that. So they built up, you know, a, a bit of a decent point total. And then they dropped down to the very bottom, battling with the LA Kings tied with 51 points and uh, coincidentally that's who the Canucks play tomorrow. So these are four winnable points today. Two in Anaheim, two in LA. I'm kind of writing off the San Jose game, not because I'm not positive. Heck, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, but we know how much the Canucks struggle against San Jose. So they should get two, get two points tonight. They should get two points tomorrow. Hopefully four out of six points on this road trip, keeping their, you know, keeping their place in the playoff battle, in the race for that playoff position. If they get three out of six, maybe that's the bare minimum. Anything less than three, though, I'd say you'd, disappoint, uh, you'd say it's disappointing, and hopefully they should be able to get four. Now, let's talk about Zach McEwen. I meant to talk about him yesterday, but I got so fired up in my snow video about Mikey DiPietro and, and, and you know, the circumstances behind his play and, and the way he played on Monday night. I forgot to talk about Zach McEwen. Zach McEwen, who the story was, the day was supposed to be about, made his debut 
on Monday night as well. And he had nine minutes and 45 seconds of ice time against the San Jose Sharks. He had one assist, he was a minus two, and he only had one hit. So the first thing that stands out is the, the one hit because he's a six foot four, 210 pound guy and you want him to hit more and you want him to be a physical presence, assert himself, but hey, it was his first game so you kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. He's probably trying to figure things out. His skating, which is probably the only weaker part of his game, it's not brutal, he's in the NHL, but you know, probably compared to other parts of his game. Yeah, I, I saw him struggle a little bit. Maybe it was because he was trying to figure out the, the NHL game, figure out systems, where he should be at certain times. But it's, I especially noticed when he's trying to get the puck out of the ice, he got rubbed out of the bo on the boards actually uh, two or three times when he, instead of making a, a, a crisp pass or, or skating the puck out. But I think that'll come again. I'm not being too hard on him. That was his first game. You did see his work ethic for sure. You did see his nose for the net. You saw that uh, leading up to his assist on the Pouliot goal. He actually did a nice um, uh, a move and, and almost uh, deke the goalie and, and put it in. But he on that very same play, he stayed persistent. He stayed on the puck and he made a really nice play out of the corner and found uh, streaking Pouliot through the middle. So not only did McEwen show his good hands and make a nice assist, he actually got Pouliot a goal. So I think even for that alone, you could say Zach McEwen's debut was was successful so again nine minutes and 45 minutes of ice time nine minutes and 45 seconds of ice time one assist minus two and one hit so I'd look to see his ice time go up today hopefully look to see his hit total go up and I think overall it was a great debut for Zach McHugh and it looks like um, you know he got better as the game went on and f extending that to a career he'll obviously get better as the number of games he plays in goes on. So that's what I got for you today, Canucks fans. Leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply as always. I won't, like I said, I won't be uploading a video later today. I'll be busy with work, but um, I'll be hopefully catching up on some of the on some of the tweets and stuff, the line combinations, starting goalie, all that kind of stuff. And then hopefully I get home in time. It's Wednesday night, so it's church night, but hopefully I'll get home in time to catch some of the game later on tonight. So leave a comment below. As always, subscribe if you like to, like this video if you like to. Have a great day. Be safe in the snow if you're traveling or commuting, whatever you may be doing, and enjoy the game. Two points up for grabs. The Canucks should be able to take these against the Anaheim Ducks. God bless, and go Canucks, go.